So I decided to make a color picker control, which is like a color picker dialog just in the control form. Uh, sometimes it's useful to use the pickers as a control and opposed to a dialog, depending on what you're doing with your software. So I'm going to show you the picker right quick and then I'll start going over the code. Alright, so here's the picker. As soon as you put your mouse into the picker, the um, mouse over color will appear in the bottom right hand corner. And then as soon as you uh, click on this control, another color box will appear representing the selected color. And there are a couple of properties that I've um, exposed. Uh, the selected color property, which is obviously just the selected color here. You can retrieve it and set it. And then the color box size percent, which is the size of these color boxes here in percentage. So I'm going to increase this to 30. And you'll notice that these boxes have increased to 30 percent of the uh, parent control. I've got the padding. I'm using the pre-existing padding property to adjust the positioning of these controls. So I'm going to take this down to 3. Put it up to 30. I also have a property representing the gradient to use for color selection. It can be a full color spectrum or a non-full color spectrum which will just be RGB. Okay so here's the code and of course I'm using some back buffers and I'm using a linear gradient brush to draw the bitmap to the control. We need to draw a bitmap to the control so that we can use the get pixel method to get the color of the pixel. Okay I also have the um, event for when the color is picked. That's pretty important. And of course I got to set my control style so that it looks nice and responds properly. I'm going to set the initial size to 200 by 100. And then I'm going to update the linear gradient brush and then update the gra graphics buffer. And we're going to do the same thing for every time the user resizes the control. And there's my um, on color picked event, which is virtual void so you can override it. And we're going to pass in this for the sender, no event args, because the user is going to access the selected color property, so we don't, we don't need to send it in through the event args. And then here's where I update my linear gradient brush. Okay, so most of this is pretty insignificant, the construction of the linear gradient brush. Um, the only significant part is the rectangle I kind of constructed here, so point empty to... Um, this dot width and then zero on the Y. And that just says how the linear gradient brush is going to be placed. Okay, so I'm going to create a new color blend object. And if I'm using a full color spectrum, then we want to set our blend positions to um, the appropriate positions according to how many colors we have. So I'm using seven colors. So I'm going to have seven blend positions here. So the first position is going to be at zero and the second position is going to be one-sixth of the way into the control and the third position will be two-sixths the way into the control and then so forth. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We want to make sure that you have um, the appropriate amount of positions for the amount of blend colors you have when you're constructing your blend object. And I'm doing the same thing down here just with uh, the red, green, blue colors. I uh, don't see much use for the RGB spectrum. It's not very useful. I just decided to do that to be cool, I suppose. And then eventually I'm just going to assign the blend object we have created to the uh, interpolation colors property of the linear gradient brush. And the very simple update graphics buffer method, you just want to create the bitmap according to how big the form is, and then you want to create a graphics object according to or from a bitmap that we created earlier. And then here's where we are updating the linear gradient brush and the graphics buffer in the on size uh, changed event handler. And then we also want to resize the child controls, which are the color boxes. Okay, so here's where I'm getting the width and height of my color boxes, and this 
width and height will be applied to both the boxes because both the boxes will be the same size. And we're going to take the box size ratio into our calculations. And I just expose this as a property so that the user will be able to adjust the box size. But really the box size will be sized um, in relation to the parent control and the size, the actual positioning and size of the control will be limited and I kind of just decided to do this so that things will be a bit more automated. Okay, and of course we are resizing the control and the control is anchored to the bottom right hand corner which means that we will need to position the control once more. Otherwise it will be extending outside of the parent control. Okay, and this is just the positioning logic. Alright, down in the on mouse move event handler we are going to assign the hover color box's back color to the uh, pixel that your mouse is currently over. We are going to get a pixel from the canvas bitmap according to the X and Y position that you pass into the get pixel method. Since the bitmap is going to be the exact same size as the control, then we can actually use the client point position of the, the uh, cursor over the control to get the pixel information. Okay, and we also want the hover color box to be initially invis invisible. And when we actually hover a mouse over the control, uh, the parent control, then these this hover box will show. And we're going to do the same thing for the the uh, selected color box, except we want to show it when we actually select a color. So these boxes should only be visible when you actually start using the color picker control. Okay, and here we're doing the exact same thing. Uh, we're just going to get the pixel at the cursor's position. Uh, this time we're going to assign it to the selected color box back color. And uh, we're also going to raise the on color picked event. And you want to make sure that you want you do this after you set the, the selected color box back color because the, we're going to use this back color property and we're going to expose it to the user so that the user can get the picked color information when registering to the on color picked event. Okay, so we are going to fill our linear gradient in our bitmap here using the graphics buffer. And I'm just passing in this dot client rectangle as an easy way to define the linear gradient's uh, brushes area to paint or apply to. And um, I'm going to draw the image unscaled uh, at point zero zero. And here are my properties. So when the user changes the color box size percent, then we want to resize the child control so that the changes will take effect immediately. And when the user changes the full color spectrum, then we want to update the linear gradient brush and then invalidate so that the changes are taken effect immediately as well. So this is my user control and it's going to be in my next release of the BSF control library on SourceForge. So take a look at it. It's pretty nice.